Good morning, everybody. It's Morning Oasis. How are you? <sighs> wow, look at today. <laughs> I can't tell if it's just really dark out or if it's like me or what is going on, but for some reason, I'm showing up super dark in my screen. Oh, I know what it is. My son, he lowers the contrast. Maybe I'll fix that for a second. <clears throat> I had to clean my glasses too. Uh, let's see, how is everybody this morning? I'm gonna play with this for a minute. <clears throat> ah, there we go. There we go. Now I feel like I can see again. <laughs> All right, how is everybody? Good morning, good morning. Morning, Andrea. <laughs> Today is one of those days where like I am again crusty. <laughs> Uh, how are you, Andrea? <sighs> I ended up going out with, um, with some friends last night. I went out with my friend, uh, Mariah Nako. They invited me to go see this, uh, poet performer who she's, um, she's, she's basically a spoken word poet. Good morning, Michelle. I was just with your sister last night. Good morning, Chris. Um, yeah, we went and saw Kate Tempest, um, and, uh, she has an album called Let Them Eat Chaos, and so she was performing last night at Mississippi Studios, and, um, Nako and Mariah invited me to come, they bought tickets for me and a few other people, and, uh, and I don't go out to shows very often, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like an old lady. How many figures are you holding up, Jesse? Oh, I can't even, I can't even right now, man. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really interesting, actually, because um, one of my friends that was there, you know, he's struggling with some intestinal parasites. So, for the first half of the evening, I was kind of like tuning in, trying to work on that, help him see what they were serving for. Um, I did a lot of work on him. Uh, and his horse was also struggling um, with, a, with a stomach ache. He was colicking. So we were kind of working all of that. And I, um, I'm one of those people when I go to concerts or shows or movies even, I, don't, I never read the review. I have no idea what I'm getting into. Um, I like to go in totally blind and see what I'm going to experience. That's my favorite way. So I don't have any preconceived notions of if I'm going to like it or if I'm not, and, and I just experience it and I see what happens. And the funny thing is about doing it that way is I tend to love everything, um, and very, very rarely do I end up hating it. The star in my background, I'm not sure which one. The Strat. Oh, the Strat. Oh, not Star. Yeah, that's my, um, that is my little Fender Strat. That was my Mother's Day present last year. Each year for my Mother's Day, I get a new guitar. Um, <laughs> I heard. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> you haven't seen my other guitar. She's, she's mighty. She's my blackbird, my blackbird baby. Anyway, so yeah, I went and I saw Kate Tempest last night with them. And um, I, I, before hearing her music, they were selling her, her works. She's actually an author, first and foremost. And I, went, I just kind of opened up the book. And the first thing I read, it was like, oh yeah, I have to buy this book. And I decided that I'd open today's show by reading you guys some of her po poem, because this is one long poem. Um, and I'm just going to read you the opening excerpt from it. I hope you guys don't mind. Indulge me if you do. Okay, so here's a, here we go. I don't do a lot of spoken word stuff, but... <clears throat> Picture a vacuum, an endless and unmoving blackness, peace, or the absence, or at least of terror. Now, in amongst all that space, see that speck of light in the fullest corner, gold as a pharaoh's death box. Follow that light with your tired eyes. It's been a long day, I know, but look. 
Watch as it flickers, then roars into fullness, fills the whole frame, blazing a fire you can't bear the majesty of. Here is our sun. And look, see how the planets are dangling around it and held in their intricate dance? This is our Earth, our Earth. The blueness soothes the sharp burn in your eyes, its contours remind you of love. That soft roundness, the comfort of ocean and landmass, picture the world. Older than she has ever thought she'd get, she looks at herself as she spins, arms loaded with the trophies of her most successful child. The pylons and mines, the power plants shimmer in her still, cool breath. Is that a smile playing across her lips, or is it a tremor of dread? The sadness of mothers as they watch the fate of their children unfold. In now, in fast. Visions, the colors like drugs in your belly, churning, your skin pulled loose as a pup's, Shaken, then tightened, now everything's flashing. The waves are magnified as they roll up towards you, and you're tiny as sand, just a speck. As you approach the surface of all that peace that you felt is replaced with this furious, never-known passion, you're feeling. The people, the life, their faces and bright are bright in your body. You're feeling. You want to be close to them, closer. These are your species, your kindred. Where have you landed? Uncurl yourself, stand up and look at your limbs, all intact, clothed in the fashion of the hour. This is a city, let's call her London. And these are the only times you have known. Is this what it's come to? You think, what am I to make of all this? At any given moment in the middle of a city, there's a million epiphanies occurring in the blurring of the world beyond the curtain. And the world within the person, there's a quivering. It's the litter in the alleyway is singing. People meet by chance, fall in love, drift apart again. Underage drinkers walk the park and watch the dark descend. The workers watch the clocks fiddle with their Parker pens while the grandmothers haggle with the market men. Here's where the kids play and laugh until they fall apart. It's kiss, chase, and dance. It's till it's mistakes in darkened rooms. Too fast to swoon, too slow, too long. We move around all day, but we can't move on. Is anybody else awake? Will it ever be day again? So that's all I'm going to read of that. But I just had to share some of that with you guys. And her work was just amazing you know honestly it was amazing i do michelle i do have room for a card pull for you um and good morning sue uh so anyway while she was working she was up there performing and uh she had t uh, three musicians behind her and i i mentioned to mariah i said you know god feel her root because it was quite unusual actually her root was really wide i mean really wide but it was shallow it didn't it didn't drive all the way deep down and so you know whenever I find myself in a position where I'm exposed to somebody and I'm given that um, that intuition to to, to look I, I I question the higher self and I ask am I here to serve and to learn right because it's always both and I got a yes. And so I started setting some things up for her that if she wanted to access them, if she ever sought for them, they, they would unfold. You know, so I didn't actually start impacting her energy. I don't do that unless I have physical permission actually with the person. But I set up things kind of like a, a bubble above her that she could grasp, right? And I told Mariah, I was like, check it out. You know? And so she said, maybe we shouldn't do anything while she's doing the show. And I said, yeah, do it for the future and as an option for her to grasp onto. So both Mariah and I were, were doing what we found inspired to do. And um, Mariah later and I talked about it <laughs> afterward and compared kind of our notes. 
and had the same kind of things except from slightly different perspectives, which is why I love working with people instead of in, as an individual because we get those confirmations. You know, you can kind of easily think of yourself as crazy in this work if you don't have those kind of confirmations. So um, afterward, you know, we were chatting and talking about it and, and she and Kate walks by and uh, as she walks by, she totally stops and, and we make eye contact and I said, I just want to thank you. I had never heard of you before tonight and my friends brought me and I'm just so grateful. And she was like, oh, really? Well, I totally noticed you and Mariah stepped forward. This is the friend who, who brought me. And, um, and, and she said, I noticed both of you. I could feel you two. And she said at the end of the show that, um, that this was an amazing experience. And truly it was. The, the audience was so, so beautiful and so tuned into what she was doing. She had all of us captivated with her work. And so, um, so then I, I told her, I said, well, I, while you were up there, I, I felt cued to look at your root and to start there. And you are so widely rooted. Uh, but we found that it didn't go down. Good morning, Teresa. Good to see you here. Um, and so she said, oh, my God, I've had people tell me that before. And I said, so we set some things up for you that if you if you would like to access them, if you would like the healing, it's it's there for you. And her mouth just dropped. And she was like, and so I kind of started to tell her what I found and what we did and, and how, as she called up, because her work is, is very politically motivated. She's, you know, she is calling out into focus what people are suffering and struggling through and, and why people are in conflict, why people are in angst with each other, why there's all this fighting, bringing all these things up, bringing up the desire for the connection and the longing for, in, in, you know, separation, right? She's calling people to awaken and find ways to, to be of love more. And as she's calling these things up from the audience, Ryan and I both just instinctually were washing these, just washing it away, allowing this purging of this polarity to come up. And so we told her that, and her, her mouth just dropped, much the way my mouth dropped when I realized oh, shit, this lady's for real. <laughs> and so we ended up exchanging just this beautiful, powerful exchange. And then she came back a few minutes and she was like, I never come through the audience. I never come out and talk to people. But I felt so safe and I knew I had to come out and talk to somebody. And so I, I said, well, I'm grateful that you did because I, I'm grateful that that I was able to in any way serve and that I'm able to share with you so you know uh, consciously and aware and she was just she was just so beautiful and so then she came back a few minutes later with her partner who's a friend and um, the, the musician companion they've known each other since they were kids they used to play in the same park uh, and he lived across the park from her and um, they, he brought her, uh, she brought him over, uh, Giles, to meet us. And he was just this amazing man who has made his life of music. And you could see she was leading with the voice, but he was leading the musicians. He knew when to come in because the music was a perfect melding, a marrying of that, of spoken word, rap, and, and, and beats that just flushed and cleared and got you moving she made you stop and look and listen and then he got you moving to release and it was just a powerful experience so beautiful i can't even describe um so yeah i uh i was on a high last night again um of energy and love and consciousness and yeah, it was beautiful. So I wanted to share that with you guys. If you haven't heard of Kate Tempest, I know it's backwards because Facebook Live doesn't know how to do that. Um, she's she's powerful. I, I would strongly recommend checking her out. It was it was an unforgettable experience to be to be to be repeated the next time she comes to town and she only hit like a few places you know i think she was in san francisco and then here 
So I have Justine and Michelle for a card pull, uh, which leaves me room for one more. If we continue in our vein, let's see. Justine, the Oracle deck wants to talk to you. This is by Raven Felon, or Messenger Oracle. But today I don't have as much of the hangover as I did yesterday. I get me thinking of Mike Myers' beat poet character. Oh, right, yeah, he was, he was, I love Mike Myers. Teresa, yeah, I can do you. Um, Chris, I'd be happy to pull your card uh, tomorrow. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> um, I love Mike Myers, and it's funny you say that because just last night I was talking about how, remember how he, uh, that one character, I think it was in, um, oh God, uh, what was the one with the dude who does that, where he's, it's the Scottish guy and he's like, oh, eat a baby, <laughs> I love that guy, I actually said that last night because I was so full. <laughs> Like, look at my tummy. Look at my belly. <laughs> I ate a baby. <laughs> yeah, it was very fun. It was a fun night. A lot of play. A lot of joy. A lot of release. A lot of, a lot of feelings. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Oh, okay. So, Justine. You got change is unavoidable. Now, I love this card. <laughs> because it shows all the different ways of yeah, get in my belly <laughs> exactly Jesse okay so I love this card because it shows all these ways that change is unavoidable right these these the processes and uh, systems and ways of being and through it all we all we can really do is observe right we can't force change we can't stop change all we can do is just release. Oh, Michelle, oh my God, upgrading pains are intense right now. And that's the other thing. Right now, you guys, we are, um, and, and I know I say this a lot, but it's because the upgrading has accelerated. The process has accelerated. Um, last year, I would say maybe once every month to two months, I would have intense upgrading symptoms. Now I have intense upgrading symptoms once every two to three days. Um, it's been powerful. You know, uh, t like for instance, Jesse, he disappeared for like seven days because he went to sleep for seven days. Uh, couldn't do anything else, was sleeping. So right now, we are shifting. We're in this change. And so, Justine, the things that are coming up that feel a little bit scary or that are giving you anxiety or that are making you w wish to kind of like find a, a hole to go hide in until the, the storm passes, the storm is necessary. It's part of what's blowing off and releasing. Um, actually, Giles last night, he was, the musician, he was saying, you know, all you can do is, is when you find a wall is butt up against it. And I said, right, because that's what's going to help you break off what, what holds you down, what prevents you from ascending even more. So right now, those things that are breaking, they have to. They have to break away. If the skin on the snake didn't break and release, then the snake would be trapped and suffocated inside of dead skin. So get comfortable with the shucking, right? Get comfortable with the release and it will be become easier. Um, it will become more graceful, right? And Michelle also, right? More graceful, just an allowance of, oh, yeah, this feels crappy, <laughs> right? Because that's all it is. It's, it's part of the shucking, part of the release. Um, okay, so Michelle... Yeah, the messenger oracle wants to talk with you also. <laughs> I can't wait to see you again, lady. I It's coming up. I'm going to be down in Eugene. I cannot wait to see you. I've been thinking about you a lot. That will be exciting. And meet your family. Mm -hmm. Super excited. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Mm. 
So, Michelle, this one for you is show that you care. Now, you have one of those hearts that's absolutely stunning, wide open, so beautiful, so generous, so compassionate. I think, though, you don't show that to yourself. I think you give that love and compassion to everybody else, but I'm not thinking that you give it as much to yourself. And right now, what I'm hearing from this card is show yourself that you care about you too. Give yourself the allowance to have this space right now, to have the exhaustion, to have those feelings, maybe to not get certain things done, not meet certain expectations, process through that <laughs> because you get to be one of the other selves also that you care about, right? The self is just as important as the other selves and it's that balance between the two. And allow yourself when you find yourself wanting to care about another to express it. You know, you don't have to hold it in. It doesn't commit you to somebody. It doesn't oblige you to them. It doesn't mean that you have to suddenly care for them uh, beyond that moment of saying, gosh, I love you. Uh, and allow that to flow more. That's the other thing I'm hearing. Let me see. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it. All right. Let's see. Teresa. Lots of energy flowing this morning, you guys. Whew. Okay, let's see. What deck wants to talk to Teresa? Um, <laughs> my energy levels are like through the roof right now. When you go through day after day of doing intensive work, it really amps you up. It's like you're up in that gear. And... Uh, I can feel it in that gear. Dreams also, you guys. Dreams right now are intense. Are you guys experiencing that also? Really intense dreams. Um, we're doing a lot of shucking work during the dream state. Um, and what we're doing, I wanted to check in on this. Yeah, so Monday, which I forgot to mention, Monday was a full, uh, was the new moon, right? So in the new moon, we don't see the reflection, we just are with ourselves. It's a very internal, kind of a dark space. So we're coming out of that, we're at Wednesday, we're two days after the new moon space. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, stabilizing your energies, yeah. So, um, I think also what's happening right now is that with the new moon energy and with the energy that we're going through with this transition of energy, uh, of uh, density, is it's it's like all all those we did this uh, meditation last week where we pruned off all those different limbs that were no longer part of our expression. So it's that multiplicity of our expression, all those possibilities, the multiverse, right? The concept that, like, if I make a choice in this moment to do this thing, in another <laughs> expression, I made the choice to a different choice. And those two parallel each other until they branch off and become their whole own lives. And so right now, we're coming into singularity because we're coming into unity. So all of those things are coming into wholeness. And what you find when you actually start traveling in that multiverse through the multiplicity of expressions, is that oftentimes, yeah, you may branch out, but you also come back in more like a circulatory system than like a um, actual tree limb. So it is definitely coming back in. Uh, yeah, you're no dreaming thing, um, but that has to do with brain trauma, if I remember correctly, and it is often, it's common for that to happen. My husband doesn't dream much either. And he had a pretty severe head trauma. <laughs> I promise I'll wake up, you guys. Normally I'm I'm up like at seven, so this has been hard. Okay, so this one is for Teresa. 
Uh, you got amphitrite. Amphitrite. Okay. So she is, um, so this is about willpower is what she kind of represents. <laughs> and is Jesse, is that for Sue that her energies are out of flux? Or is that for me? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Jesse's, Jesse woke up and he's way on. He is on. It's interesting. Okay, so um, Teresa, the Amphitrite is, um, she's the, the goddess of the sea. Me, yeah. Um, I'm definitely shifting. I am definitely shifting. Uh, okay, so she is the goddess of the sea. And one of the things that we have to remember, when we are mighty, when we hold a lot of energy, like she holds the force of the ocean, we have to stay in tune with the fact that our moods are no longer, um, we can't just be willy-nilly with them, right? We can't just ride our emotions to wherever we want to. We have to be conscious of the impact that they have upon others. Yeah, rarely dream since head injury. When I do dream, it's definitely a medicine dream. I would agree completely, Chris. So... Teresa, it's time to start owning the power with which you're influencing those around you. The ocean has to remember when she creates a giant tempest that it's going to eventually hit landfall and it's going to scour the land. Now, sometimes that's necessary in order to wipe clean something that's ready to be released. Sometimes it's not necessary and it's destructive, but again, you know, that's going to depend upon your perspective. Your emotions are running high and from all directions. That makes sense. You're kind of tempestual right now. And she's asking you to start having more willpower and seeing the service aspect of your energies and your emotions. One of the things I had to learn, uh, I, um, I don't think of myself as, as being scary. But when I'm angry, I'm downright terrifying. And I get angry. And my family would be like, you don't understand. You don't get it. Like, being on the other side of you mad. And I'm like, well, I'm not yelling. I'm not doing anything. I'm not hurting anybody. They're like, yeah, but it's like a wall that hits you of your energy. And I was with a friend of mine who is very much like me. And she got angry at me. And she rarely does that. And when she was angry at me, it felt like a knife. It was, I, I had never experienced anything quite like that. People don't get that mad at me very often. Uh, and, and especially not people that are mighty like that. And so I felt it and I was like, oh, oh, that's what they're talking about. And that was why I had to experience it. So I would know, oh, that's what it feels like to get that, that energetic smack down. So no, I may not be being angry with my words or angry with my hands or angry with my physicality, but with my energy, I'm being quite tempestu tempestuous and it's time to own that. So she's asking you to display some willpower and recognize your might because if you need to clear house and get rid of people in your life, and a big storm is what's necessary in order to do so, then do so. Uh, but if it's just because you're riding the wave, <laughs> so to speak, then pause, put a wave break in and let yourself feel that more and, and take that wave back into the ocean, not to the land, not towards the people. Let it come back into the internal and do the clearing and cleansing internally rather than externally because really internally is where we first must cleanse before we can expect the external to change. As Bashar says, you don't look at the mirror and yell at it until it starts smiling. You have to smile and then the mirror smiles back. So that's the card pull for that. So this week we've been on a theme. We've been on a theme of fractured states and really understanding them. Sorry. I didn't have any yawn again today. <sighs> anger has been up front in my life for the past few weeks. Intense anger with others. Yeah. So it sounds to me like what's really going on is it's time for you to understand why you're drawing these people into your life that are enraging you. <laughs> you know, um, 
<laughs> it's funny you say that, Jesse, because one of my good friends, the movie maker, he's like, Jesse, we need to get you on Gaia TV doing this. Seriously, you need to get on Gaia. And every time he says it, I like... <laughs> <laughs> hide so what I would rather is like all of you guys start going and being these guys right I'm just helping you all wake these parts up in yourself so that you can go out and do this service as well the more of us the better right it's not just one <laughs> um, so we've been talking about fractured states and I feel like we're gonna continue that that's gonna be that theme for this week um, and I know that some of you guys had some little kids come up uh, that were that that maybe you didn't quite know how to deal with, don't know quite what to do with them. Ten to four, my friend. Uh, ten to four a.m. Ten ten a.m. to four p.m. Is that what you're talking about? That's way too long. That's ridiculous. That's redonkulous, dude. Redonkulous. Okay, more coffee. So <clears throat> one of the things that we tend to forget about, oh no, I'm never, I'm never going to do my own network, Chris. <laughs> Did you see Oprah? She went through hell. <laughs> she had money to do it. And she went through hell building her own network. Um, okay, so uh, with fractured states. When we, one of the things that we, we don't really recognize, and we don't talk about it, because in our culture, we're always trying to avoid this narcissistic concept, but we have to remember that this whole, um, oh, 10 four. okay, good, all right, <laughs> I was like, that's ridiculous. Um, so we ha what we have to do is, is recognize that everything that's going on around you is you. It is all you. And the reason that somebody becomes, let's say, narcissistically personality disordered is because they can't recognize the co-creative aspect of that. They're just, they, they're only stuck in their matrix. So again, it's going to be a delicate balance when you start bringing in and really internalizing this concept of the external is your video game and you are the one who's, who it's for and everything is happening for you to communicate with you, to help you understand you better. Um, that has to be balanced with the fact that for the other, it's the same. Everything is for them. You're for them. You're there to help them understand themselves. That's why we're always in a teaching, learning, and learning, teaching position and role. Thank you, Jesse. I'm gonna let you continue with that. So when we're in, when when we're actually interacting with our matrix, let's say um, let's say you have somebody who comes up. We'll just take Teresa's example. You have somebody come who just pisses you off, right? And your first instinct is to do everything you can to get rid of them and to push them away or to or to strike back or to show them how how wrong they were or to get them to admit their faults, their flaws, right? What you're actually doing is being faced with this part of yourself that you've decided is unworthy of love. Because let's, let's think about unity for a minute. If unity is true, and we all truly are one, and we all come from the same, and we all are in the human condition, and we all have these experiences that we have to go through, that means sometimes I am selfish, sometimes I am generous, sometimes I am arrogant, Sometimes I am humble. I am all things. I must also be the negative polarity things as well. Where we get into trouble is when we put valuations upon them. I want this more than that. I want to be more humble than to be more arrogant. And I've decided that it's I am better if I'm humble than if I am arrogant. So the parts of me that are arrogant then get rejected and they get pushed out of me and I believe they're not mine. So the only way they can exist is in the external, so therefore I will draw arrogant people to me. And those arrogant people will get angry at me all the time for being so arrogant. You see how this works? 
So as we've rejected the self that, that feels any sense of arrogance and that that's wrong, has judged that as bad or wrong, we're going to continually be given the opportunity to have that arrogant self come and say, can you love me now? Can you love me now? We might even fall in love with people who end up being extremely arrogant, extremely self-centered, extremely self-focused. So they come and they're like, arrogant, arrogant, arrogant. Can you love me now? Why don't you love me? Why don't you love me? And that's actually because they're, they're serving, right? They are like, you know, um, uh, character actors in movies. So character actor is somebody who's cast in a role because you look at that person, you already think of what their, what their character is. <laughs> you know, you know exactly what they're going to be playing. They hold that role and they're cre it's like typecasted, right? They already hold the vibrational frequency of the character you want to play. So you're drawing these character actors who hold the frequency, your child state that you're ready to see needs in order for you to see them. Right? So they need the right puppet in order for you to animate it. They need it to recognize the signature. So as they come forward and they're playing out this role, you have a choice. You can either yell at the mirror and tell the mirror to not be arrogant and reject it for what it is showing you, what is, or you can pause and try to find the child state that you rejected, that's behind that arrogant filter, that's saying, can you love me now? Can you let me in now? Uh, let's see, and doesn't wanting to be more humble in order to be better beget the question, better than what? And if you want to be better than something, doesn't that devolve back into arrogance? Exactly. Thank you, Jesse. perfectly said. So when this is where it becomes important to allow oneself to be honest with what they're seeing, um, this is also where I, I encourage people to, to judge. And not to judge externally in the sense that now I'm going to have a conversation with this person and I'm going to tell them how arrogant they are. You are so arrogant, right? Because <laughs> that doesn't get you anywhere. But in the internal, pausing, going to the self, I often encourage my students to sit down and write out their list of judgments. Everything you'd point your finger at somebody, that you're, the, the main focus that you're working on, whoever it is that's before you, everything you judge them for, right? Every single thing. They do blah, blah, blah. They're so blah, blah, blah. They do this all the time. They're always like this. They're, everything that you judge them for, judge them good or bad, right? And that list, when you're all done and you can't think of anything else that you'd want to point your finger at them for doing, pause, read the list again, and recognize this is yourself. This is how you actually treat yourself and what you judge yourself for and what you deem yourself as unworthy, unlovable, unvaluable for. And then try to figure out usually ask how old is that child that decided they're not worthy of love at this state so that's what we're going to do in our meditation today we're going to work on seeing the child behind that and bringing them in bringing them incorporating them in we're going to use the bus tool which i personally love it actually it's not mine i didn't create it it came to me in therapy through my through my amazing counselor or therapist she was, she's brilliant, <laughs> and she, she was like, you know, Jesse, the driving, who's driving your bus? It's time to figure out who's driving your bus. And we actually, what we would do is create a home space that was a safe space for all my little girl parts to hang out in, uh, and they could have whatever they wanted in their different rooms and their different spaces. They could share spaces. They could have their own spaces. They could have their own fields to play in. But when it was time for me to go somewhere and do something, then I had the bus and I drive the bus so they could come with me if they chose or they could stay home but they had to recognize that I was the one driving the bus so that was the tool that we worked in therapy and it came through in energy work as well and I was like awesome a good therapist is going to incorporate going to marry these two worlds so <clears throat> turn off the 
that. Get a sip of my coffee, my smiling coffee, and I hope you guys are getting comfortable getting ready to do, do the meditation. Okay, so <clears throat> go ahead and take a few deep breaths. Breathing in this present moment, present awareness. And exhaling. Breathing in, present moment, present awareness. And exhaling, releasing. Breathing in, present moment, present awareness. Adjusting and moving the body as you do so when you need to. And as you exhale, I want you to unhook yourself from all the judgments of yourself that you've been holding today. All the things that came up during this conversation. Hmm. And as you breathe in, draw back in these lines of connection. Coming into wholeness of self. And exhaling, I want you to release all the judgments you've held in the past about yourself, just for this time and space. Coming into wholeness, coming into oneness with the self. Good. And I want you guys to feel your roots growing down. Feel those roots. So many of you do this so regularly now. You're already grounded. But that doesn't mean that you cannot improve your grounding with intention and focus. So if you already feel grounded, don't skip this step. Feel what your grounding feels like. Where is it strongest? Where is it weakest? Where do you want to go more? If your roots grow deep and wide, try growing them in, right? Try growing them into the spaces between things. Try growing them between all things. As Jesse would say, try growing them into the space in between the dimensionality. If, you are, if you're not finding yourself grounded, then this is the time to really develop a strong root structure, that foundation. So feeling those roots growing, Sending them wider and deeper. And taking some of those tap roots from your feet, sending them all the way down into the heart of Gaia. As you ask Gaia to come to you, to come up and into you, to support you in this work of accepting all that you are in your multiplicity, your multidimensionality, in your physicality, all that you are. Ask her to come in and guide you and support you in this work. Again, thank you, Jesse. And feel how she's already guiding that energy up through the body. You don't have to do it this time. She's supporting you. And she will always support you if you ask. If you ask. If you do not ask, you cannot receive. Right? It's my husband's one of his favorites. Feeling that energy already. It's coming up through our hips and up into the abdomen space. Feel how it has this flush of joy with it. This excitement. <sighs> 
One of the things that Gaia teaches us so well through her trees is what it is to inhale what another believes to be toxic, what another is exhaling and releasing, and to transmute that into what feeds and serves the others, right? She's so good at that, breathing in that toxicity and exhaling life-giving oxygen. But for her, that carbon dioxide coming in is the breath. So we're in the symbiosis together. What the other releases is toxic, we can use. Let's learn that from her in today, in this meditation today. Set that as an allowance state for the self. Toxic is not toxic. It's nutrition for something we have yet to learn. Feel how she's blossomed in the heart space and the lungs coming out through the shoulders. This is an allowance meditation, not a guided, not a, in, in a forced meditation. So allow it. Feel how the arms instantly become fully engaged, fully embodied of this energy as Gaia slips fully inside of us. Allow her to come up through the head as well. No fear, no anxiety. Let us begin to see ourselves how Gaia sees us as we look at this mirror. Feel the crown opening. And feel how source is already slipping in. Coming into the vessel. As we ask source to help us understand true unity. In total allowance for the mirror as much as the self. I don't know about you, but I could stay like this all day. <laughs> and you can, just allow it. Now I want you to call in front of yourself a mirror. And ask to be shown someone in the mirror right now that you judge in your life, that you have conflict with, that you have challenges with. See them in the mirror. Now, release the idea that you are bad for judging and let your judgment finger fly. What do you judge them for? What makes them unworthy of your love, unworthy of your allowance, unworthy of your acceptance? Whatever you've judged them for in every possible way. I want you to keep thinking of those things that you judge them for. If you need to, you can write them down until there's absolutely nothing else that you can think of that you can't stand. I mean, all the way to like a mole on their face or whatever, I don't know, <laughs> whatever it may be. Just total, total judgment. We're gonna indulge in a moment. An allowance. For example, the person that I'm judging is another healer that I have to have a conversation with soon. I don't like the way they're conducting their healing sessions. 
they're blaming the people that are coming to them for healing as though the people coming to them for their work are giving them something rather than owning the fact that they are taking it on and don't know how to release it. I don't like the way they treat people outside of the healing session. I don't like the way that they talk to the women in the healing sessions and then outside of the healing sessions in complete contradiction to what they're preaching. I don't like the way that they judge. I don't like how they judge others because the others are not like them. I don't like that they try to make the others be like them in order to be worthy of their acceptance. These are some examples that I'm learning, working on, allowing myself. Keep going until you've got nothing left that you can think of that you judge the other for. Hello, Father Crow, Brother Crow, with a big stick in his mouth, building his nest. Now I'm getting a sense that most of you are done. You've finished your judgments. And now you're sitting watching in judgment. I want you to see, is there a little child that's peeking from behind that person in the mirror? If you can't see one, assume that they're there. And I want you to tell yourself, how old is that child? How old were they? when they decided they were not lovable, that they were bad for these things, for behaving in this way, for thinking this way, for wanting to protect the self, for wanting to act out. What number comes to mind? It can be any age. What do they believe to be true about themselves? What do they believe makes them unworthy? See how much it aligns with this list of judgment? What have they been doing for you on the outside? What kind of situations do you abandon them to handle? What are they sick of having to do for you? What if they feel unrecognized, unvalued for? What do they do that is so powerful that you almost wish you could do for yourself? Continue looking at this child self until you see them for how beautiful they are, how powerful they are, how strong they are, how much they've endured, how in awe you are of them that even though since this time they were rejected, They've continued to bring people to you to help you see them. How resilient they are. How much they want to be loved. How much they want to be let in. And how much you want them to come back in. Wouldn't you love to have that fight inside of you instead of coming at you? Continue looking until you can't see anything but how amazing they are, even in the behaviors 
that may not be the best, what you think is good. My little girl's pretty fierce. She's compassionate even in her ferocity. She's amazing. She can help anyone, even when we reject them. Even when they reject her, she still helps and holds compassion. That's pretty amazing. Notice how in that mirror, the one we started with looking at and judging is no longer even there. Just that childlike state is there. Just that piece of us. And it's like they're standing at a bus stop and you're on the bus and you've pulled over, but you haven't opened the door yet. Brother Crow is back. Open up those bus doors and ask her or him to come inside. They may not trust you and they may not come right inside right away. So if you need to step out of the bus and go to them, do so. What do they need from you in order to feel safe in order to believe that you're not just going to shut that door in their face and drive away again. What do they need to know from you that you witness about them so that they won't fear that they'll ever be bad enough that you'll reject them again, that there's nothing they could do to be thrown off of that bus again and left alone, that they'll never have to take over the puppet of another for you to see them. What do they need from you? Love, acceptance, allowance, as another bro brother crow comes by. <sighs> so this crow outside my window has just flown three times right over the head of another crow that's perched on the top of the house. He flew over three times and then he landed next to him. And now a third crow has landed. Does the child need to know that you'll sit next to them? That you'll stay at their side no matter? That even when others are attacking, even when others are judging, even when others are re rejecting, even when that child self and the whole self is being used in another's matrix and must serve, must embody that which they are capable of holding in order to serve the other self in seeing the self, that you will still love them for it? Because that's part of your job, being here being an individuation? Do they need to know that you will love and support them even then? Show them. Show them that you want them to come on to this bus and that they can have anything on this bus they need, anything they want, because this is a bus of abundance. It has everything for them. What do they need in the bus? Do they need their own little special place that only they can get into? Do they need to sit right next to you? Do they need the Divine Mother and Father to hold them for a while? Showing them love? Do they need a plant? A blankie? A book? They can have anything that they need on the bus. What does yours need? 
to feel like it wants to get on with you. And as they come on to the bus, they only have to agree to one thing. They are not the drivers of the bus anymore. They'll never ever have to do that again. They'll never have to take the wheel. They are the child and you are the adult you will make those choices for them. They're not going to be expected to drive and navigate through a world they didn't have the permission or the preparation or the training to navigate by themselves. You've done that. Show them your driver's license. You're the one with the commercial driver's license. You're the only one who has the permission, the authority, the ability to see all to drive the bus. However, let them know you want them to still see through their window of perception. Because they see things you do not. They see them with a way you do not, with a clarity you do not. And you value that from them. You value their perceptions. They are of value to you. And you want them to share them with you. So, let them know that they can give you a signal when they need you to pull over and have a conference of what they're seeing. That signal can be anything. It can be a buzz in the ear. It can be a flush of sensation on the skin or internally. It can be an energetic signal. Maybe it's something coming to you on the external. Maybe it's a number that you'll see. Maybe it's a symbol that will pop into your mind. It can be anything. What does your childlike state want to use to communicate with you? What will their signal with you be? I feel like most of you've gotten it. If you haven't, just keep listening. Now I want you to make a promise to that child that moving forward, every single time you get that signal from them, you will pull the bus over. You will pause, you will stop, and you will go ground yourself, you will connect, and then you will listen to what that childlike state has to share with you. You will receive from them because you know how important it is. You won't make choices. You won't make decisions on the spur. You won't be reactive. You will pause and receive from them. You'll go to the bathroom. You'll go home. You'll go to the car. You'll pull the bus over. And they will not have to take the wheel because a dangerous situation is coming. Make that agreement with them. Create that state of allowance with them. And now that they're in the bus, I want you to drive that bus into the heart. Just like that's the depot for your bus, is the heart space. Opening up that heart space and letting them come inside. The whole bus with all the children in it. As my child comes down. I want you guys to enjoy this space, feel this connection, and if there's more children ahead on the bus stop, or you find another child at a bus stop along the way, pull over, repeat this process, complete this process. We'll work more on it tomorrow. I love you. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you later.